Coach Jay Thomas, the Beeman football team, coming off a game in Lafayette against the Raging Cajuns, in which it was obvious to see some significant improvement, and now facing, without a doubt, the biggest challenge the Demons have faced uh, this year in uh, facing the Mississippi State Bulldogs up in Starfield on Saturday. Coach, let's reflect back on the game in Lafayette against the Raging Cajuns. The progress was obvious, particularly on the offensive side. Well, that's what you want to see as a coach. Uh, from game one to game two, the improvement uh, of, of the team. And uh, it was really nice to see our offense, you know, develop and, you know, uh, move the sticks. We put up some good numbers as far as yards, uh, points, you know, and, and everyone knows we have opportunity maybe to get another 21 or 17. We had those opportunities there. But uh, felt like the offense really functioned well. We ran the football 55 times in the game, uh, threw it 16. You know, that was a little different for us. We, you know, we're a little more 50-50 as an offense. But uh, we really wanted to focus on getting our run game going, uh, particularly to help a, a young defense in a lot of areas, too, as well. So the time of possession battle, we won that. And, you know, that was, that was one of our goals, you know, to be able to do that. But uh, very encouraging, very excited about this week. You know, continue to move on the right path. And speaking of moving on the right path, uh, the final number might not reflect it, but the breakdown of half to half does reflect that your defense made some progress after halftime. Yeah, and, and you know, we were in position to make some plays. Um, we didn't make them. You got to give ULL a lot of credit. Got a really good offense and uh, very talented, skilled players. Big offensive line. Quarterback throws the ball really well. And we had guys in position to make plays. We didn't make them, but uh, you know, hopefully we'll begin to make those plays. We start seeing things a little bit better. Uh, defensive line wise, uh, still young at those defensive tackle spots. They're getting better. Uh, every game they'll learn more. Uh, as they go along, we have to be patient with them. And, you know, so it's, it just comes down to, you know, cutting down those run seams inside. And, and that's something that we've got to get better at. Uh, we still gave up too many big plays defensively, but we did make some plays too as well. So um, I thought there was a big improvement as far as technical end of it, fundamentally, uh, getting our, our eyes in the right place was was uh, much better than week one so you know satisfied with some of those things but not satisfied with giving up those those big plays one of your best playmakers on defense is now back on defense adam jones comes in at safety this week uh, what kind of uh, immediate impact can he have in helping other uh, defense improve yeah having adam back is going to be a, a big boost to our secondary uh, allows us to get in some different packages too as well so we can get uh, you know, Chase Collins, Poulard, and Adam all on the field at the same time. So that's going to be a big benefit for us. And, and then there's a, a, a sense of uh, comfort for everyone else on the back end, you know, to have a guy, an experienced guy back there that can help us get into coverages. And, you know, Adam's a good tackler too. He's, you know, he's a ball hawk. So having his skill set back there is, is going to be a big benefit for us. All right, flipping to the other side of the ball, the eternal question, quarterback. Uh, last week you had two guys who did a lot of good things, actually three with Daniel Hazelwood and his uh, capacity, and then uh, didn't get to play Steven. Uh, you came into the game saying you might play all four. So what's the thought process, of, particularly with J.D. Allman having looked so good in his uh, Demon debut? Well, that's been the plan all along, you know, is, is to get all four quarterbacks in the first three ball games before we get into to the uh, conference stretch of eight games. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we didn't get Steven in the game. Um, we did get Hazelwood in a little bit, you know, in, in a uh, situational type deal. But, uh, you know, I thought that uh, Joel did a nice job running the offense, uh, running the option game for us. And, you know, it gave us that extra threat out on the edge and something they hadn't seen us do. So, um, but I thought he did a really, really nice job there. And then, of course, JD coming in. Uh, they hadn't seen J.D. on film, but uh, I, I knew watching J.D., J.D. has a great feel for the game. He can make things happen. You know, I just wanted to make sure we got him in, in a game and uh, so we can evaluate him. He did a very nice job. Touchdown pass, had one drop. Uh, so I thought he did a nice job of handling the offense and, you know, 
JD's got, you know, and Joel, all these guys have great leadership, you know, abilities. So, you know, um, everyone can see what I've been dealing with. You know, the, all these guys, they, they are, all do a great job, and they're good guys. So, you know, it's been fun to watch them develop. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been some work to make sure we get them all in and get their, their packages, because they all do a little bit different. All, the skill sets are a little bit different. But, you know, it's been entertaining. It's been fun. And, you know, we'll try to play as many guys as we can again this week, you know, before, uh, before we batten the hatches down and go into that last run. All right. Uh, one of the many challenges uh, as you play Mississippi State is facing one of the best players in the country, Dak Prescott. Yeah. Talk about uh, that challenge. Well, just watching Dak, you know, um, on film here the, uh, yesterday and today, uh, you know, he, the game's so s slow to him. You can tell it's like he, he is playing a video game. And uh, you watch him against Southern Miss and LSU, you know, bringing pressure at him. It doesn't really phase him. He's a tough guy. He's got an unbelievable arm. He looks like an NFL quarterback. He kind of reminds me of Donovan McNabb. You know, built the same, um, uh, very speedy. Uh, the ball comes out really fast and, and really hot. He makes, he makes good decisions. He doesn't panic. So, you know, the whole offense is based ar around him. And then obviously, um, you know, he was a Heisman candidate uh, last year, this year. So it's going to be it's going to be a big challenge, you know. And there's no doubt about it, uh, you know, to, to face a guy with his his skill set and what he can do. Now you were at the other school uh, as head coach when his brother was playing here until the last year his brother played here in 2010. You were on our staff. Jace was on the other side of the ball, so your defensive line were trying to deal with Big Jace. Uh, I don't know that you ever got out to tailgating much before the game, but Dak was out there wearing purple and white and orange. <laughs> yeah, I think we saw Dak around here some. You know, when I left Nichols and came here, his brother was still playing. And, um, boy, he was a good player too. Big guy, big strong guy. Yeah, so, yeah, so, you know, hey, he's a local guy. Dak's a local guy. We pull for him, you know. Um, you know, you always want to see your Louisiana guys do well no matter where they are. So, uh, you know, and then, of course, yeah, he's got he's a little purple. Maybe he still has it in his closet somewhere. And <laughs> I don't think he'll wear it this week, though. <laughs> you, you don't try to work out a deal with Coach Mullen where Dak can follow in Jace's footsteps and maybe take a few snaps for the Demons? Yeah, well, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think Coach Mullins would allow that to happen. <laughs> Uh, it's a thought. You've, yeah. got, you've got plenty of quarterbacks, but yeah. uh, they've got plenty of cowbells. Yeah. Talk about uh, the cowbell factor. Well, it's going to be really, really extremely loud, you know, so now you go into our, um, our offensive cadence, our communication. Uh, it's going to be a little different for us. We got a little bit of it last week. Uh, you know, it, was, it had a pretty good crowd and, and the noise dealing with that, you know, down at ULL. So, we're going to have to pipe it in this week, so it's not going to be us uh, preparing for it, but everyone around here, I just don't want everybody to get upset. You know, they're sitting there trying to work and they're hearing cowbells ringing over the <laughs> scoreboard speakers. We're just trying to get our guys used to it because it's going to be loud. It ought to be fun. Um, you know, it's, uh, and you're going to hear it from the beginning to the end. So it's something that we're going to have to deal with. We're going to have to prepare for it, but it ought to be, it ought to be exciting for our guys. You know, is the strategy quiet the cowbell, make some plays? Well, I don't think you ever quiet, quiet the cowbells, man. Those guys, they ring them on every down. It doesn't matter what the score is. You know, it's, it's, the cowbells are going to be ringing. You just might, when you pull in on the bus, you're going to be hearing the cowbells. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Thank you.